Today we're going to be looking at how to make the Titan 85L. The L designates that this is a lathe part, which is meaning that we're turning this material. It's a cylindrical part. Let's take a look at our blueprint first. That way we better understand what's going on with this part. Very first thing that we have going on, this area right here where I'm moving my mouse around, this is our front view. Notice on the front view, it is stating that the overall diameter of the outside of our part is 950 thousandths. Look, looks like there's a hole on the end of it, and that hole has a 380 thousandths diameter chamfer at 45 degrees. There is a sectional view right here, going from A to A. To the right of our front view, we have our section view. In our section view, we have all, pretty much all the measurements that we're going to need to make the revolve part. And as we stated over here, there is a tapped hole. This tapped hole is 3816 unified course. And notice right here it says we want 320 thousandths minimum of threads. Okay. And then over here, looks like we got some corner radiuses. Uh, we have some information stated about our drill diameter that actually is used to make the threads. We have our overall diameter. We have a detailed view here. We have our X measurements here. We have another corner radius. Some more X measurements. We have this nice circle here with its dimension here. Over here, these are the thread measurements um, as indicated in detail B. The overall major diameter of the threads needs to be 490 thousandths. And then our thread relief diameter here is going to be 300 thousandths. In the corners of where our thread relief are, there is also a corner radius at 20 thousandths max. That particular radius is derived by the, the actual tool that is used to make that feature. To the left of this, we have our isometric view, which is our three-dimensional view. We also have another detailed view, which is indicating our pitch diameter, our major diameter, and our minor diameter. Right above that, we have our thread chart. The thread chart, this is a chart of measurements that we use when we're actually making this particular part. So physically turning it on a lathe. And with that in mind, all of our measurements should be within these measurements in this chart. These particular measurements are actually stated in the machinist handbook. And so if you're curious on where they're getting that from, you can actually open up a machinist handbook and you'll find all this information in there. Now let's jump over to Fusion 360 and start making this part. We're over here in Fusion 360 and we're about to make the Titan 85L. Very first thing that we're going to start with on this particular part is the center line running down the part, so L on the keyboard. We're going to click on the top plane and we're going to draw our center line anchored from our datum location. The center line as stated on the print is 1 inch 505 thousandths. From that location I'm just going to come in and arbitrarily put in some lines. After I put these lines in then I can come back in and dimension these lines as stated by the print. So all I did is put some vertical and horizontal lines in and at this point now we're going to switch over to dimension mode so D on the keyboard or sketch down to dimension. We're going to come in from our datum location out to the end of this line and as stated on the print, this is 475 thousandths, just like that. This next line in here is stated at 275 thousandths. 
this line in here. This particular one, you have to look at the detail B dimensions. This one is stated at 300 thousandths diameter. So we're going to divide that by 2. Notice you can type in a mathematical formula into the edit window and then press enter. And it'll calculate that for you. And then we're going to take this dimension here. And same thing, this measurement is coming from detail B, 490 thousandths, divide by 2. Notice right here, see how some of my extension lines are all getting jumbled up? At any time, you can actually click on these things and drag them around. You can also drag out some leader lines like this. You're just trying to better organize your workspace so you can actually read all these dimensions at a glance. Now that we have our vertical measurements, we're going to press D, and we're going to start putting in some horizontal measurements. As stated by the print, this one here is 500 thousandths. This one is 1 inch 140 thousandths. This one is 1 inch 205 thousandths. And that appears like that's all of our dimensions at this time. It's a good opportunity. You need to look at your sketch and make sure all of your lines are black in color, meaning they are fully constrained. Notice that my line over here is blue in color. This is a good opportunity to click on one of your endpoints and kind of drag it around and see why is it not constrained. So notice how this particular one I can drag it around. So notice we have some perpendicular constraints. We have a horizontal constraint. So you need to add a constraint in here to fully define it. This one I'm going to add a vertical constraint on it. And we're basically indicating that the line is perfectly vertical. Notice now that I got that constraint in, everything is black in color. Last thing we're going to add in on this particular part is our circle right down here, C on the keyboard. We're going to anchor this circle right in the midpoint of that line. The diameter of our circle is 250 thousandths. And we're ready to go and revolve this part. We're going to make our way up to the solid tab here. Create, down to revolve. We're going to click on this profile right here. We're not going to be including the circle. We want to exclude the circle. Next thing in our pop-up window, we're going to select our axis. Just like that. And then press OK. Notice how we went from a profile sketch into a three-dimensional body. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to add in some corner radiuses on this before we start adding our threads and our tapped hole in. We're going to go to Modify, down to Fill It. We're going to start with this particular corner radius. As stated on the print, this is 16 thousandths. Next one that we're going to look at is this line and this edge here. So I'm going to right click and repeat. I'm going to click on those two edges. This one, these two edges are 15 thousandths. I'm going to right click and repeat again. And as I indicated before, down at the bottom of our thread relief, we are also going to have a corner radius of 20 thousandths. In addition to having the corner radiuses here, we're also going to have to put in our chamfer for our thread lead and exit. So we're going to go to Modify, down to Chamfer. We're going to click on those two edges. And as stated on the print, they want us to have a 35,000 chamfer here, just like that. Now lastly, if you look at the, the notes on the particular print, any other sharp edges, so for example, this edge, this edge, and this edge needs a, a 10,000 chamfer at 45 degrees. 
we're going to right click repeat we're going to finish up those three edges there notice how it says three and we're going to type in ten thousandths so our part is fully deburred now there's no sharp edges on it now we're ready to add our threads so just like on the Titan 84L, we're going to go down to Create, down to Threads. We're going to click on this face right here. We're going to check the model box because we want these to actually look like threads, not, not an image of threads. And as indicated on the print, these particular threads on this part, are half 13 threads. Notice the default here is half 12. So we're going to change the thread pitch on it to half 13 unified course. We want these threads to be a class two way, so we want a mid fit on these threads. And then we are going to press OK. So notice now we have our threads. Last thing it, that we're going to add on this part before we're pretty much done is we need our tapped hole on this particular side. So just like when we made our mill parts, we're going to come over here and we're going to create a point on this face. And then that point we're going to go and drop a hole location. So I'm going to first start off with a sketch. So I'm going to go create down to sketch. I'm going to click on this face right now. Notice there's already a point there. It found the center location of that particular face and that so happens to be our datum location. So we don't even actually have to drop a point at that location. We can actually go to solid and to hole or H on the keyboard. We're going to click on our datum location and this particular hole according to the print needs to be 3816 threads so it's going to be tapped for threads. We're going to scroll down a little bit. Our size needs to be 38 which is the decimal equivalent is 375 thousandths. Notice the default is 3816. This particular print doesn't specify what classification of threads this is. So the vast majority of the threads that are out there are going to be class 2B. And this particular one is saying they want 320 thousandths minimum of threads. We're going to change this value here to 320 thousandths. And at this particular point, we're going to disregard the other information when they're talking about the, the drill diameters and things like that. That's information that we would actually need to know if we are programming this part, but not actually when we're designing the part. So with that in mind, I'm going to press OK. And notice we have some threads. Now, lastly, I'm going to come in and edit my threads. I don't like the, the visual representation of these threads. So I'm going to go down to my history markers, right click, edit. I'm going to scroll down here and check the model box. And then one thing I, I noticed that I missed on here is we also need to add in that chamfer. So we're going to scroll back up to the top and we're going to cl click on the countersink button. We could have done this after the fact, but since we're here, we're going to type it in now. On the print, it states that the diameter of the chamfer needs to be 380 thousandths. So I'm going to change that to 380. And then that the angle needs to be 45 degrees. But notice on this pictogram, they're talking about an included angle from one side to the other. 
So we actually have to take that 45 degrees and multiply it by 2. So 45 times 2 gives us 90 degrees. And now we're going to press OK to update our part. And notice we got some beautiful threads now. And we have our chamfer. This is a good opportunity. Double check your part. Make sure it looks like the blueprint. Because when we're actually making these parts for a customer, they're not going to accept a part if it's not what the blueprint is asking for. This concludes the tutorial for the Titan 85L.